the skin, any blisters or swelling. You want to also make sure that you're looking between the toes because like I said, that's a that's a common point of fungal infection. So you want to make sure you're not seeing anything unusual there. You also want to make sure that your footwear is appropriate. Um, it's important that people with diabetes, because they can't feel as well with their feet, never to walk barefoot because you never know whether or not you're stepping on a small pebble or something that might cut the bottom of your foot and you might not notice. Um, you want to make sure that you're wearing clean socks with all footwear. Um, you want to make sure that you're wearing shoes and socks even in the house. You um, make sure that your toes aren't scrunched together like they are in the picture on the right. You want to make sure that your shoes aren't too tight. And um, always check your shoes before putting them on, uh, just to check to see if there's any small rocks inside, especially in Arizona. I'm sure that it's a common thing. Now, in terms of diabetes and oral care, um, because, diabetes, diabetes. Oh, because diabetes affects the way that um, we heal, it causes us to be more susceptible to bacteria infections. And one of the ways that that shows up is redness and swelling in the gums, and also sometimes where your gums recede. Um, another thing is when your blood sugar is not well controlled, sometimes your blood sugar goes high, and then you'll have a higher than normal amount of glucose in the saliva, which makes an ideal environment for um, cavities to form. So you want to really make sure that you are um, brushing your teeth twice a day. Um, make sure that you are flossing, but don't floss too vigorously to the point if you notice that there's a lot of a lot of unusual bleeding, that could be a sign of um, gum disease as well. So watch that. Um, you also want to watch for a thrush. What thrush is, is sometimes it shows up on the far back portion of your tongue or um, in the throat where there's these white patches that develop. And this is going to be something where you might not be able to see it in the mirror. Somebody might have to help you out with it. But um, what that is, is that's an infection in the throat. And sometimes it'll be painful and sometimes it'll be itchy. But um, in every single case, you wanna make sure that you're paying attention to that. Um, because again, if you can't fight infection as quickly or have as vigorous an immune response, it can um, spread. So again, brushing twice a day with a soft bristle toothbrush and toothpaste with fluoride um, flossing is important. Um, your dentist can probably um, give a suggestion for an antibacterial mouthwash, but it's pretty important to use that daily. Um, people with diabetes, it's important to get uh, preventive dental care, and that means going to your dentist at least twice a year, and for some people it's quarterly, so four times per year. And then um, also with diabetes, because there are medications involved, Make sure that you let them know which medications you're taking because that can affect any antibiotics that they might be giving you um, and any pain medications as well. Okay, another important fact is that um, for people with diabetes, it's important to keep your immune system in tip top shape. So you really wanna be taking a multivitamin supplement. Um, it can reduce the chance of you getting sick um, for a lot of multivitamins, the important ones to look out for are vitamins A, C, and E, and those are antioxidants. What that means is it helps the body um, fight off uh, the stresses of the environment. So it helps fight off some of the damage from UV rays. It helps the body fight off um, any starting infections. Um, another important one is vitamin D and calcium, uh, which allows the body to um, make strong bones. And that's commonly with people in diabetes, especially um, as the disease progresses, um, the function of your musculoskeletal system, so bones and muscles, um, tends to degrade over time only because um, the organs aren't getting the nutrients to the correct area 100% of the time. And then another important one is um, vitamins B9 and B12 and iron um, because those make blood cells. So that is the end of my presentation. Does anyone have any questions?
And if not, here are some quick um, phone numbers for diabetes education programs in Phoenix. And feel free to turn your mics on as well um, mm -hmm. and put your questions in the chat. Um, we do have one question. What about a vitamin B complex? Right, that's, that's a great question. Um, so for vitamin B complexes, um, they, they tend to be a good idea. Um, what you wanna make sure about though, is that you're not using that in lieu of a multivitamin. So sometimes it can supplement, but don't use it instead of a multivitamin because it won't have those vitamins A, C, E, um, D, or calcium that are also necessary but they're always a good idea. And from a dietitian standpoint, um, I just recommend looking at the back labels of your multivitamins, like Jason mentioned, because um, usually if, if your multivitamin has, um, it usually lists it by the percent of daily value. And if it's you know got a decent amount or close to the RDA, you can for sure get plenty in a multi. You don't have to spend your money and buy another vitamin. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Was so there any anyone other else questions? have any questions? Okay, if not, I'm going to turn it over to Diana. Alrighty, let me start sharing. Oops. Um, it's going the wrong way. <laughs> Sorry, let me see what happened here. All right, can you guys see that? Yeah, that looks great. All right, thanks. All right, my name is Diana, and I'm going to speak to you guys about um, exercise and diabetes. As um, Trisha mentioned, I am a graduate of PVCC. I graduated last year with my Associates in Exercise and Fitness. I'm a current uh, DTR student um, graduating this May. Um, my future plans to use my exercise and uh, my DTR degree are to um, be an exercise and nutrition consultant. I love the outdoors. I love hiking, cooking, and um, traveling. So as previously mentioned, you want to um, talk to your doctor before starting any physical activity or exercise regimen. Um, the ACSM recommends pre-exercise screening uh, based on your physical activity level, uh, your signs and symptoms, and or your history of cardio, uh, metabolic, and renal uh, disease. And um, what is your desired exercise intensity? So um, this is especially important if you're over 35, you have a history of diabetes for more than 10 years, um, you've had complications um, with your diabetes or complications of diabetes. And uh, most importantly, if you haven't exercised in over six months to a year, you want to make sure that the doctor is aware that you want to start um, 
exercising, then they monitor your medications, your insulin, your, you know, um, your health, um, you know, and if you have a history of heart disease, they'll run a couple of tests just to make sure that you're able to do these exercises without any um, complications or um, issues. You want to start slow. Um, you don't want to, you know, run a 5K or a marathon on your first day of just exercising, of course. Um, you can start by taking a brisk walk. You can walk the park. Um, you know, if you have a dog, you can walk him around um, the block a few more times extra than you usually do or take him to the dog park. Just run with them. Uh, you want to invite a friend, um, uh, you know, just as an accountability partner, you guys can be accountable for each other. Hey, we're going to go out Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. We'll walk about two blocks. We'll go to Friendship Park. You know, just, you know, uh, for accountability, for motivation, for encouragement, um, it's more fun to walk or exercise with someone. You know, you guys get to chit chat, you know, your girlfriends get together. Um, you know, just talk about the latest movie or whatever, you know, just make it fun. Uh, you want to exercise. You want to do some activities indoors and outdoors. Um, there's uh, recreational centers that you can join. They have um, inside racquetball, inside tennis. They have inside and outside tracks. Um, you know, you can start a walking group or join a walking group, you know, get the neighborhood, um, you know, the neighborhood involved in just you know exercising you could do a weight challenge um and again as previously mentioned you want to wear comfortable shoes and you want to wear comfortable clothing um, dress for the weather um, make sure that your clothes is um, loose fitting your shoes are comfortable you know grab some or buy some good walking shoes um, make sure that they're that you inspect the inside, of course, as Jason mentioned, you don't want small pebbles in there. You get a blister and cause infection and um, seamless socks are recommended. The seams sometimes they rub on your toes and they may cause a blister. Um, and they do sell those at the, you know, like Foot Locker, um, you know, the uh, walking or the shoe, the shoe place where you get your running shoes sorry i had a brain um so benefits of exercise i mean there's lots of benefits of exercise so it's going to lower your blood glucose it's going to improve your blood pressure it's going to help you achieve and maintain um healthy body weight you you know you want to lose weight in order to feel better to you know, um, decrease your insulin um, or, you know, medication intake, and it helps you keep your um, heart and lungs um, healthy. So as far as, you know, um, lowering your blood glucose, exercise works the same as uh, insulin. So when you exercise, it's going to lower your insulin. Um, but you also want to be careful because some exercises of high intensity lower your blood glucose a little quicker so then that's when you want to have your uh, glucose tabs or you want to make sure that um you uh, you know eat a good meal before exercising and um obviously when you're exercising um and it and you notice that you're going to be noticing changes and you're going to notice when your blood glucose goes uh, down and so you want to make sure that you have um, you know, some carbohydrates to eat 20 to 30 minutes after exercise. And of course, we'll go over that here shortly. And um, it's been um, stated pre in previous uh, lectures. Um, so then your goals um, should be, you know, if you're obese or overweight, or you just want to, you know, maintain your um, diabetes, you want a waste, weight loss of 7%. Um, you also want to choose healthier options, add more um, fruits and vegetables to, you know, your diet, eat less fried foods. Um, for breakfast, you can have the overnight oats. There's lots of recipes going around right now. We saw one with the for RD day that they posted and it looks um, delicious. I haven't tried it, but, you know, that's a healthier option instead of, you know, an Egg McMuffin from McDonald's or, you know, try just to limit your, um, you know, your fast food. 
Um, you want to increase your exercise um, slowly. So you can start off, like say you work, you know, in an office all day, you have a sedentary job. Um, you get two 15 minute breaks and a 30 minute lunch at most places. So, you know, for one of your breaks, you eat your snack. And then you walk around the facility, either outdoors or in, indoor, depending on, you know, the space, or you can walk around your office if, if you're able to for 10 minutes, three times a day. Um, at lunchtime, you eat your lunch and then you walk for 10 minutes, um, you know, and then your second break, um, you take your break, you know, eat your snack and walk 10 minutes. Um, you want to increase this slowly, you know, you want to increase it by 10 minutes, you know, every few days until you reach 150 minutes, five to six days out of the week. And um, you can start with, you know, slow or you can go to moderate activities. Um, you know, you just increase this um, after work, you can, you know, walk the gym or, you know, on the treadmill. Um, just increase it little by little. You don't have to start fast. You just, you know, have to start somewhere. Um, when not to exercise. So um, this is really important because, of course, you want to make sure that you are, once again, checking your sugar or your blood glucose before and after exercise. So, um, well, first of all, you don't want to have a sore throat, a fever, or chest pain um, you know, when you're, or a chest cold, sorry, when you're, you know, trying to go to the gym, um, having diabetes in itself, you're not already feeling well. And then these, you know, um, like a head cold or anything can already lower or increase your blood glucose. Uh, if you have a blood glucose of over 250 with ketones and ketones are measured in um, your urine, and you want to be careful with that. You don't want to go to the gym. Uh, you also want to use caution if you have a blood glucose of over 300 um, without ketones. You know, you want to measure all this before um, you go to the gym or after the gym. Uh, you want to check your blood glucose 15 minutes after you start exercising, just in case if, you know, you're going to, you know, depending on what kind of exercise you are doing, you want to make sure that you're, you know, feeling okay. If your blood glucose drops below 70, you definitely do not want to exercise. And um, the, you know, you'll notice that, of course, you're at the gym, you're exercising, you'll feel kind of sweaty, but out of the norm, like excessive sweating, you're feeling shaky, you're dizzy, you feel nervous or anxious, you have a headache. These are mild symptoms of uh, your blood glucose dropping. Um, you want to have quick acting carbohydrates with you, which some examples um, that are that I um, put on here are, you know, you the glucose tablets or the gels. You can take four tablets or one packet of gel. That's uh, 15 grams of carbs. You want to always have snacks with you. Um, snacks such as, you know, a four ounce, four ounces of uh, fruit juice or orange juice, one small box of raisins. Uh, four ounces of regular soda, not the diet soda. You actually want the soda, uh, the sugar from the soda. And most importantly, you want to always carry identification. Um, there are those little bracelets that have the little diabetes symbols. Um, that way, whoever, you know, is around you and they notice that you're not feeling well, they see your bracelet or I identification bracelet and they know um, how to act quick. Uh, you also want to have your ID with you just in case you want to have some uh, changes. Uh, I mean, some change in your pocket just in case if someone needs to be called. You want to have your cell phone and you want to have, of course, uh, plenty or enough quick acting carbohydrates just in case. And they mentioned the rule of 15 um, previously. So obviously you want to have 15 grams of carbs. You'll take that. You'll um, wait 15 minutes, you'll monitor uh, or check your blood glucose again, and if it's still not where it needs to be, you'll take another 15 grams of uh, carbs. Diane, there's a question. Um, someone wanted to know, what exercises would you recommend that would be best to lower high blood glucose? Um, so that's uh, my next slide, actually. <laughs> Uh, there, it just depends on your, 
exercise um, level. There's going to be exercises that if you have high blood glucose, you want to do moderate to um, vigorous exercises, depending on where you're at with your, um, you know, like your diabetes or high blood pressure. You always, like we stated before, you want to ask your um, physician or your provider or, you know, your doctor that's monitoring your sugar, which, you know, where should you start? So um, if you're just starting out, you want to at least do some, you know, moderate activities. You know, you can walk 1.5 miles, um, you know, in 30 minutes, uh, you know, that means you're gonna walk, uh, have a brisk walk or, you know, like a fast paced walk. Uh, you can um, ride your bike for four to six miles. Um, you want to, you can go swimming, you could do water aerobics, you can uh, dance. Um, you know, you don't have to start jogging immediately, but there's, you know, like a program that we uh, would do at the uh, fitness center at PVCC is that, you know, they start you walking for, you know, one minute and then you walk um, a quick, a brisk walk, then you walk again, then you, you know, increase that, you know, by mileage and stuff. Um, there's programs that we have at the PVCC fitness center where, you know, we can start you off, but I mean, just moderate exercise is going to start helping decreasing your blood glucose. I'm sorry. I, I hope that kind of answers it. Um, so you want to start off with those exercises depending on your, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, uh, the follow-up question was, are there any foods that help lower high blood glucose? Actually, um, Yes, there are foods that help you lower your blood glucose. Um, obviously, um, in a previous uh, discussion that you guys had, um, one of the girls had mentioned about the carbs. You want to eat, I hate to say good carbs, bad carbs, but you want to, um, you know, stay away from like the starchy foods, um, bread, uh, tortillas, um, foods that have like, lots of sugar, you want to stay away from lots of sodas. Um, you just have to, um, well, I would say increase your fruits and vegetables. Some fruits do increase your blood glucose, so you have to watch your fruit intake, but I would recommend more vegetables than um, starchy foods. That de that'll help you decre decrease your blood glucose. Does that help a little bit? <laughs> so I'm, I'm gonna, uh, so the types of exercises that you want to, oops, that you want to start. Um, so aerobic exercises, uh, walking, jogging, swimming, um, water aerobics. You can uh, ride your bike. Um, dancing is always good. Um, Resistance training, you want to do free weights like the dumbbells or, you know, uh, the weight machine, body weight, and the one the people in the pictures are doing, you know, uh, Russian twists, um, and they're using the medicine ball. So those come in, you know, like two pounds, five pounds, 10 pounds, 15 pounds. So you want to increase your intensity at each time. You don't want to start, you know, heavy right at the beginning. And resistant bands are always great. Um, those have been coming in handy here lately because everyone's at home. So you just want to, you know, exercise, start slowly, start with the least resistant and increase um, slowly. Uh, you want to do flexibility exercises like yoga, um, tai chi. That's, you know, for uh, strengthening and uh, stability. And, you know, especially like, you know, you're starting, you're maybe over 40, maybe over 50 and your diabetes, like, you know, have, you have neuropathy in your feet, you know, you want to at least try some kind of yoga or Tai Chi to strengthen and, you know, get some stability and um, daily movement, just, you know, plan an active weekend. There's, you know, um, so much to do out here. Uh, you can find, um, you know, some trails, uh, Rio Vista Park, I live in the west side, Rio Vista Park has a, um, it's a track, it's 
about 8.4 miles. You don't have to do the 8.4 miles, but you can walk it, you know, with your friends. Um, you can walk the actual Rio Vista Park. Um, there's, um, you know, uh, take the stairs instead of the elevators, especially, you know, if you don't work in an area where you can walk outside, you know, just these small movements, just, you know, little, little steps can increase, you know, just, uh, I mean, not, uh, decrease your blood glucose because you're staying active, you're, um, you know, moving around, walk the dog, you know, like I stated earlier, walk the block, uh, the, the dog around the block a few more times extra than you usually do. Um, you know, get outdoors. Um, there's so much to do out here in Arizona and now it's starting to get a little hotter so you want to hydrate make sure that you're drinking at least 15 to 20 ounces before you start any um, exercise you know regimen or you start the gym or you start walking or you know whatever you're going to start make sure that you're uh, drinking water before during and after um, your exercise you want to start slow like we stated you know you want to you know walk on the treadmill or walk a trail or walk you know the track at you know your gym you can choose easy trails there's the all trails app and it'll tell you which trails are, are just for walking which trails are um, paved which trails have lots of rocks which trails have um, um, you know they're they're steep. Um, there's, like I stated, the parks. I love going to the parks, the dog parks, the regular parks. They all have places where you could, um, you know, just uh, walk. You don't have to move fast, but you do have to move. And, you know, that that statement is just saying, you know, just get out there, you know, and move. You know, you'll notice the difference. Um, so then um, some goals that you want to, you know, just, you know, a, you know, start for yourself is start short, accomplishable goals. You know, like I said, walk um, 10 minutes, three times a day, you know, every other day, if you want, you know, you can walk every day, you know, at work or around your building, like I stated, or, you know, just start moving, you know, three times a day for 10 minutes. It, if you have like a bicycle at your home, a stationary bike, at home, you know, if you're watching your favorite show, get on the bike and rest at commercials. Um, you know, set a good time to exercise. Sometimes it's uh, better to exercise in the morning. That way you'll have your breakfast. You know, you'll um, exercise, you'll go to work or do, you know, your daily activities and you're, you know, noticing how your blood glucose is acting. So that way you can, you know, uh, choose your meals accordingly. Um, have your gym clothes ready, you know, pack it in the truck or in your car, you know, throw it in the back seat and that way it holds you accountable. You're like, okay, um, my gym clothes is here. I have no excuse. Um, you know, right after work, I'm just going to go walk the treadmill maybe for 15, 20 minutes and see, you know, um, how I feel. Uh, and again, find a accountability partner, find a friend that wants to, you know, has the same goals that wants to walk or you know, run or exercise with you, you know, that always just, you know, it helps both of you guys out. And, um, okay, so any questions? If anyone has any questions about exercise and diabetes, feel free to um, turn on your mic or enter in the chat. And then I'm gonna, comment on one of the questions about keto just coming from a diabetes educator standpoint um, when yeah. the is done. Um, how about baked chicken it says yep heart health option just like trisha said i would um bake chicken boil chicken or grill chicken i would not fry chicken and um Actually, if you're going to get, um, if you're going to choose chicken, um, cut off all the fat, um, that makes it a little healthier. Um, the crock pot, you know, stick it all in there. Um, that always helps too. Um, what exercises are best to lower high blood glucose? Um, any exercise really to lower blood glucose is good, you, but you want to start with moderate 
um, exercises. Uh, raw greens are better. What is that? Raw greens are better or grilled. Um, you both, I eat grilled veggies and I eat raw veggies. Um, it just depends on what your taste preference are. Um, raw veggies, I feel that, and I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that they're more nutritious. Once you cook them, sometimes the vitamins, I mean, it doesn't have like the, as much vitamins. So I eat a lot of, uh, raw veggies, like raw zucchini, raw cauliflower, raw cucumbers. Um, so the, the question about keto, I didn't want to put anything in the chat because it's actually a, a quite a long answer. <laughs> um, so I, I've attended uh, lots of diabetes seminars and um, actually went to one recently at uh, Phoenix Children's Hospital and one of the endocrinologists there actually did present about the ketogenic diet um, more in type one diabetes and children. Um, you know, basically the, you know, long term research isn't really there. Um, some people it can, you know, obviously keto diets if done properly <laughs> um, can help people lose weight. Um, so my opinion is, it depends on the person, number one. Number one, if you can do keto long-term and make it part of your lifestyle and do it properly, um, you could have some you know, health benefits from it. Um, now that doesn't mean eating all the bacon and um, fried foods that, you know, fried meats or any bad meats that you want, because unfortunately it does raise your LDL cholesterol and having diabetes it does put you at risk for heart disease. So we don't want to, you know, increase that risk further by increasing the LDL through diet. Um, now they have done studies with people, they call the Mediterranean keto, which is where you only focus on eating all the heart healthy fats instead of all the, you know, saturated fat. And they sh showed that LDLs did not get impacted as much. And the LDLs, as your doctor calls it, your bad cholesterol, right? Um, that's the one that causes the plaque buildup. So, um, the research is pretty mixed as in long term effects and heart disease. Um, but I, my, I would say my personal opinion for most people, it can't not, it can, it's usually not a long term approach to overall wellness. Um, it's usually a, kind of more of a fad diet, right? People want the quick fix. And, um, and, and then what happens is then you lose the weight and then you gain it back if it's just a quick fix, right? And it, you're not making permanent lifelong healthy changes. So purpose, like with my, my patients who are very, very sensitive to carbohydrates, we focus more on a, you know, a low carb diet, not a keto diet. Um, and another reason for that is if you go on a keto diet um, and you're on insulin or, or you're on any type of diabetes medications that lowers your blood sugar already, when you stop eating carbs, you can go into a hypoglycemic crisis. So um, you should always, if that's something you are interested in, obviously you need to check with your doctor first because <laughs> they would need to adjust your medicine um, if you're removing carbs from your diet. Um, and as you lose weight, you will need lower doses as well for medication. And also then you would want to work with a dietitian who specializes in the keto diet so that she's monitoring working with your physician at the same time. So it, 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 it's keto diet is, um, it's not really straightforward and there's a lot more to it than what you see in the media. You actually need to take a ton of supplements too because you, when you remove carbs, you remove your B vitamins, like Jason mentioned how important B vitamins are. You lack those in your diet, you lack minerals, vitamins. So in order to do it properly, like you have to keep a close watch on your intake of those too. So. Um, I, I personally don't use keto diets as a diabetes educator. Um, like I said, I use more like a, you know, heart healthy eating, more unsaturated fats as well as lower carb, depending on the person's um, tolerance to carbohydrates. And it's very successful when patients lose weight, they lose it at a slower weight, but it's the type of weight that stays off. And, um, and, and it's more doable. Um, to not eat carbs is hard. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, that, that's my personal uh, opinion. And so, yeah, Mediterranean diet is fantastic. Um, like Teresa mentioned in, um, you know, one of her past talks, she really promoted, you know, eating more plants doesn't mean you have to be a vegetarian or anything. But the great thing about Mediterranean is that 
you do focus on so much more heart healthy, whole green, whole food plants in your diet and a lot less saturated fat, a lot less, you know, sugars and things like that. And it also promotes activity. So the Mediterranean diet's like pretty much just a heart healthy overall good diet. Um, and it's good food, right? People in the Mediterranean eat wonderful food. <laughs> I should have mentioned the, you know, like to the exchange, obviously, um, like either quinoa or brown rice instead of so I always say, you know, like cut the carbs, but you're right. Sorry, Tricia. Yeah, so yeah, definitely. Um, Jason gave the list of diabetes programs in the Valley. So if you want to go on, you know, working towards long term change, um, highly recommended um, that you work with a dietitian, diabetes educator that's preferably contracted with your insurance. If you have insurance, use it. Um, you can check with your insurance plan and see who they're contracted with, um, which dietitians or which centers, and then that way you can get it covered as well. Um, like Blue Cross Blue Shield of Arizona, um, I contracted with them and patients didn't even pay me a copay. Um, I just verified their insurance, they made an appointment and I billed their insurance. They didn't have to pay me anything. So um, Blue Cross, Medicare, all of your commercial will cover um, diabetes care for sure. Does anyone want to comment on about arsenic and rice? I personally am not concerned about it. <laughs> Arsenic's in a lot of things, but nothing in a, in rice. It's not a toxic amount. <laughs> yeah, like someone said, you'd have to eat pounds of it. Teresa said you would have to eat pounds and pounds <laughs> to get too much arsenic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and is there any other questions anyone else has by chance? This is our last session, sadly. <laughs> um, but definitely, uh, we hope to have different topics in the future and we will let everybody know. Um, and uh, I would guess one thing that we were talking about is maybe setting goals, right? Dan and Jason, maybe it, for the participants, like based on all the sessions that they could attend, um, maybe making some goals. Yeah, um, yeah, small, small attainable goals is always, I mean, you don't, like I said, you don't have to start fast, you know, just you know, aim for two to three days out of the gym, or like I said, 10 minutes a day, you know, three times a day, and then just increase slowly. You know, you don't have to go run a 5k on your first day when you, oh, you know, you want to start exercising, but, you know, small attainable goals, which is also, you know, it kind of makes you feel like you're, you've accomplished something. Oh, today I walked 10 minutes tomorrow. I'm going to achieve 15 minutes the next day, 30 minutes, you know, so it just kind of like helps you to, um, you know, like it encourages yourself. You're like, I can do this. And then by the time you know it, you're at the gym, you know, walking your five miles or, you know, doing your exercises, um, five to six days out of the week for 150 minutes is what's it's recommended. And don't get discouraged. <laughs> Definitely. And even when we're talking about diet, um, I mean, it is very, very difficult to change your diet overnight or, you know, suddenly. Um, so just taking small steps um, over time, keeping your goals achievable, uh, making sure that you're not overwhelming yourself with all of these changes all at once, because if you do that, it really seems insurmountable. And really, we want to keep goals achievable here. Mm -hmm. Well stated, both of you. Um, and don't don't forget, like I said, ask for support. Talk to your doctor. Um, you know, you can get support from a you know dietitian, diabetes educator um, who's contracted with your insurance um, to help you with making those small changes. And and like both Diana and Jason mentioned, those those changes will add up over time. They they might sound like to you like small and insignificant, but believe me um they they make big impacts in the end in your overall health 
I just want to say thank you to everyone that attended today and also those of you that have been attending all of our series and to Jason and Diana for doing such a wonderful job today. It has been so much fun um, doing these series for the last five weeks. So um, hopefully we can start another fun series here in the future. We'll, we'll let you know. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thanks for all of your attention. Appreciate it. All right. And then it's posted up for the website for anyone that's interested on the chat. Oh, thank you, Rosina. That's so great to see all the success that you've made. Yes, good job. Yeah. Yes, change is hard, but good for you. We all have things to work on, even me. <laughs> me too. Me too. Got more veggies to my diet. <laughs> I think that's all I eat. I hardly, I hardly. I mean, I eat my protein, but in other ways. And I, I do eat a lot of ground turkey and chicken and baked stuff and I love to cook so I guess that's a positive right <laughs> yeah. I've learned so much in um, Marianne's class as well and lots of healthy re recipes and I've just been exploring a lot of healthier options and stuff so I've, I've been learning to cook a lot this uh, these past semesters since we're at home <laughs> Yeah, so that is kind of a blessing, right? Of having everyone kind of at home. It has kind of forced you to get more creative with cooking and. Definitely. And you probably know as exercise, right? If you're not going to a gym, right? Because of COVID and you gotta get creative. <laughs> yeah. I have two small parks around me. So I try to walk as much as I can outdoors, but now that it's getting, you know, like warmer, the other days it was like, almost 80 and I was like, I'm not going outside for anything. <laughs> All right, well, it looks like everyone's logging out and there's some more questions and um, Rosita just shared, she loves the cut, that's great. Um, that is good. Yeah, summer is coming. Real <laughs> <Yeah>. in time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you, Tricia. Thank you.